Hey YouTube, welcome back to a brand new Animal Crossing New Horizons video. Today we're taking a look at 5 things you still didn't know were a thing in New Horizons. It's a pretty fun one so without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. So many of us have been lucky enough to be playing Animal Crossing New Horizons for some time now. I think we're approaching the fourth month mark which is just crazy and on top of this we're also well over a week into the latest summer update that added a whole bunch of new content which is great and of course more and more people are playing the game every week which is awesome. Of course Animal Crossing New Horizons has been a long awaited installment for many people as well as being quite different from previous versions and has introduced many people into the franchise for the first time. So I know many of us myself included are still finding out new things every single day whether it's tiny little details that went unnoticed or in game features that are still undiscovered by many. With this in mind I thought it would be cool to go over some things that you probably didn't know were a thing in New Horizons. Of course it's impossible to highlight features that every single player doesn't know since we all play differently and some players are newer to the game than others but hopefully you'll discover something new. So here are 5 things you still don't know about Animal Crossing New Horizons. Number 1. Horned Hats now those of you who have played the original Animal Crossing will know the characters were much smaller back in the day and always wore a horned hat. It didn't matter which design or pattern you used, the hats always matched the shirts and the hats always had horns. There are many fan theories as to why these human characters had horns but the most popular theory seems to be that they were just trying to fit in with all the animals around town. Either way the horned hat as they're commonly referred to quickly became iconic in the Animal Crossing universe however over the years with the upgrades and customizations added with every iteration of Animal Crossing they kind of disappeared and were no longer the default headgear that you couldn't change. Now despite them not being mandatory in recent games they were at the very least still an option for those that wanted them and you may be surprised at this but it turns out the horned hats are still a thing in New Horizons. There's no way to actually create them in game but you can use custom pro designs to scan in old QR codes of horned hats which you can wear. You can use old designs floating around or boot up New Leaf and create one specifically but there are also websites that allow you to create patterns and save them as a QR code for a horned hat. These were initially designed for New Leaf but the code still work. All you do is scan them into New Horizons using the Nintendo app and just like that you can wear a classic horned hat. It's pretty awesome and a huge nostalgic throwback. But what do you think about these horned hats? Did you know about this? Will you be wearing one? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Number 2. Diving Off Cliffs now it's pretty obvious that since the summer update to New Horizons you can now swim in the sea and dive underwater to catch all new sea creatures but what you probably didn't know is that diving off cliffs is a thing. Back in Animal Crossing New Leaf when swimming was first introduced all the towns had a cliff area where players could jump off into the sea. It was pretty fun and made for some great photo opportunities. Now in New Horizons we've known since the trailer we can somersault off the rocks around our beaches and we all kind of assumed this was the replacement for jumping off cliffs. But it's not. It turns out we can still jump off cliffs in New Horizons despite them not being flush with the sea and actually set back from the water. Here you can see my character jumping off a level 1 cliff which is more than a tile away from the water. You can stand there and jump off or run and do a somersault. Furthermore you can also dive into the water from over 2 tiles away which is awesome. Again you can stand and jump into the sea or run and do a somersault. However probably the most surprising thing is despite my awesome no diving sign which I'm really proud of by the way you can actually jump or dive off the top level over the lower level and into the sea. It's absolutely insane and is so much fun. So there we have it we can still dive off cliffs. Of course the little bit of land that pokes out is perfect for this but you can also dive off the back of our islands to the north as long as there's no rocks in the way which is super cool. Number 3. Wand Wetsuit Life Hack Now by far the most popular question I get asked since the summer update was released is how do I assign my wetsuit to my wand? And that's a great question. Of course with all the swimming and diving we can now do we need to have access to our wetsuits pretty much all the time but we don't always want to be wearing them. I mean they're cool but they're not fashionable. 
So the easiest thing you can do is assign them to your wands, which is a tool that allows us to change our outfits super quickly. And you see me do it all the time in videos. So how do we assign our wetsuits to our wands? It's easy. You can't. However, there is a pretty simple solution, and once you know it, you'll wonder how on earth you missed it. Simply reassign your go-to default outfit that you wear the majority of time somewhere on your wand, and instead wear your wetsuit and maybe some other swimming gear like the snorkel as your default outfit, and then use your wand to put your outfit of choice back on. And that's it, you can go about your day and when you want to put your wetsuit on, simply use your wand to revert back to your default outfit, which is now of course your wetsuit. Not only does this mean you'll be able to change into your wetsuit anytime you want, but you'll even save some space in your inventory. But let us know what you think of this wetsuit life hack in the comments. Number 4. DOI Recipe Types now for those that play New Horizons you'll know one of the main focuses of the game is crafting a wide variety of items using crafting materials and DIY recipes. These DIY recipes are found in a number of ways, I won't go into them all but most notably they're found in message bottles found on our beaches, in the balloons that float across our skies or from villagers that live on our island. But one thing that seems to regularly be forgotten is that some DIY recipes can only be obtained from certain villagers with specific personality types. As you may know, every villager in Animal Crossing has one of eight personality types and are either cranky, jock, lazy, smug, normal, peppy, sisterly or snooty. You'll probably have already noticed your villagers address you differently and some are happier than others and this is linked to their personalities. Anyway, their personality type also determines what DIY recipes they can give you, especially when they're crafting away inside their houses. For example, the recipes for the plain wooden shop sign, like the one I used for my no diving sign, and the pitfall seed can only be obtained from jock villagers. So if you're wondering why you still haven't found a specific item, it's probably because you don't have that personality type on your island. In total there are 8 personality types, so it's a good idea to have at least one of each living nearby. Plus, if you're getting a lot of duplicates, maybe it's time to get some new villagers moved in. Number 5. Meteor Showers Now this is a biggie and may be obvious to some, so I'll get straight to it. Isabel doesn't always announce when there's going to be a meteor shower, in fact, she rarely does. As you know, meteor showers are really cool in-game events that allows us to wish upon shooting stars at night time and rewards us with very rare star fragments that we need to craft things like wands. Again, something you may not know is every single player gets something in the region of 6 to 10 or more meteor showers every single month. Now the key thing to remember is there are two types of meteor showers, heavy showers that see pretty much a constant stream of shooting stars all night long and light showers that consist of small bursts of stars every so often. Typically you'd get one heavy shower and on average eight light showers every month. This chart from Meteo Nook shows the exact amount for a typical year. Anyway, it turns out Isabel only announces heavy meteor showers, and she only does that if there's not another in-game event taking place, like a villager moving in or out, or having a campsite visitor and things like that. So there's a good chance she's only ever told you about a meteor shower once or twice since launch. So if you're looking at catching a meteor shower, just know your island isn't broken, and actually you get at least one light shower every week, they're just harder to spot. Just don't rely on Isabel to tell you when they're going to be. Anyway, if you're interested in wanting to know exactly when your showers will be, be sure to check out the Meteo Nook tool, I've gone over this in more detail in another video which I'll link below if you want to find out more. So there we have it, that was 5 things you probably didn't know about New Horizons, at least for the newer players out there. But what was your favourite from this list? Are you happy to know horned hats have returned? Or are you excited to see jumping off cliffs is back? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Anyway, for now, that pretty much wraps up this video. If you're an Animal Crossing fan, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any New Horizons news. Until then, I'd like to give a special thank you to this channel's Patreon supporters, as well as this channel's members. You guys absolutely rock and truly help me upload as regularly as I do. I couldn't do it without you. Don't forget to head over to our Discord server too. And of course, if you got this far in the video, please comment horns. Just to let me know you did, that would be super awesome. And please be sure to include if you like the wetsuit and wand life hack. I'd love to know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it entertaining. Please be sure to leave a like if you did. Thanks for watching. I hope you have an amazing day. 
Stay safe, and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.